I remember sitting down with my father and sort of saying, well, look, I'm going to sell everything. I'm going to sell the business. I'm going to break up with the girlfriend. I'm going to um, you know, rent out my house and I'm going to move to Vietnam. You know, like I said, Vietnam's on, um, you know, a rising uh, growth. And it, 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 honestly, uh, it's one of the fastest growing economies in the world, right? So the Vietnamese, from a Western point of view, are super creative. For me to, to come in here and just be around this sort of beautiful growth and exciting um, you know, place and city and people, uh, it, it is, it's really engaging and it's really inspiring. So, you know, it's great to be a part of that. Đây là The Insight, nơi trò chuyện cùng những người chủ doanh nghiệp và chuyên gia đầu ngành để cùng trao đổi và phân tích về những vấn đề đang nổi lên trên thị trường kinh doanh và đầu tư. Tôi là Lan Anh và khách mời ngày hôm nay của chúng ta là ông David Jackson, CEO Colliers Việt Nam. Hi, uh, I'm David. Lan Anh, Zing, yeah. it's a pleasure to be here today with you. Actually, to begin with, I want to introduce you not only as the CEO of Colliers Vietnam, but also as a foreigner who has spent like 15 years, right, in Vietnam and or more ex exactly uh, in the Vietnamese real estate market. So as far as I know, you were a biology student in the UK and then working in the banking industry too. So how did you end up with the real estate? Uh, uh, well, I mean, it, quite a long story. Yeah. Um, I, I actually think the, the first thing is that um, I was very interested in biology and that's my first degree. And I was interest, interested in biology because I like to understand how things work, how my body works, mm -hmm. um, you know, nature and everything around. And I think at the same time, later on when I was interested in real estate and property, it was the same thing. I was interested about how my body worked in biology, and then I'm mm -hmm. interested about what's around you every day. I'm interested about understanding what's around us and, and what we live and work in and listen to and everything. So it's like real estate is about everything around us, right? Well, I think you spend a lot of time in your house. You spend a lot of time in mm -hmm. the office. Uh, you know, basically it's a, the living environment around you. And so I'm fascinated as to how it works and how you put that together and, and what makes a great space and what makes a great place to live in, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I wanted to be part of that and make sure that I make uh, and help create great spaces for people to live in. Mm. But what exactly encouraged you the most to change to the real estate market? Um, so I, I, I went through a few different jobs, um, mm -hmm. you know, in my career. Um, and one of them, um, I was running bars and nightclubs and mm -hmm. my business partner was in real estate and uh you know he, he seemed to have a pretty good career and he helped kind of put things together and make sure that there, there was great places for people to be and work in and structure and uh you know the more he talked about it the more fascinated i got with it so i, I went back and did a second degree at university and found out a lot more and then um you know i came a little bit obsessional about it and i uh, kind of went and Uh, you know, looked at more and more qualifications and more and more sort of um, assessments and work. Uh, you know, for a, for a good four year, five year period, I was kind of working pretty much every day and night, <laughs> um, trying to trying to get up to speed in terms of my knowledge. Mm. But why do you choose Vietnam? I think there's a lot to do in the UK, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, there's a lot to do in the UK. A actually, you know, first off, um, 15 years in Vietnam, um, living and working here, and Vietnam has been very great to me. Um, actually, originally, um, I had a girlfriend at university and, you know, mm -hmm. we, we broke up when university finished, but she was a lot cleverer and a lot smarter than me. And she went and traveled abroad to Asia. She was a lot more adventurous. Um, and I don't think I would have had the courage to do that. I mean, that just wasn't the thing 25 years ago, 30 <laughs> years ago. So, um, and then I kept getting postcards and, and hotmail. And I thought, well, you know what, if it's good for her, let me try and come to Asia. Um, this is back in, you know, 1999. And um, the first country that I went to uh, was uh, Thailand, because that's where you land. But then after that, it was straight to Vietnam. 
And so that my real first experience of Asia uh, ever in my life was Vietnam. And the people were lovely. Uh, the food was great. The country is so beautiful. And so it was always in the back of my mind and then jump forward a, few, a couple of jobs later. Um, and I just thought I wanted to try something new. So um, mm. uh, as I mentioned, I was working in bars and nightclubs, but I just sort of, I remember sitting down with my father and sort of saying, well, look, I'm going to sell everything. I'm going to sell the business. I'm going to break up with the girlfriend. I'm going um, to you know, rent out my house and I'm going to move to Vietnam. I think my dad thought at the time I was having a bit of a breakdown. Um, but actually now he, he's he's completely, uh, you know, Vietnam is one of the most exciting countries to be in the world. You know, I came here just with a, a backpack um, and didn't know anyone, didn't speak Vietnamese. Um, you know, so it, it was very, it was a, it was a risky decision. Yeah. Um, but thankfully it worked out okay. <laughs> but what did you just see in Vietnam at that time? Actually about the the business opportunities at that yeah, time? Yeah, I, I, well, I think the first thing is I, I was kind of done running my own business in the UK. And that was mm -hmm. that was that was one of the things. And then uh, actually my brother was in Hong Kong, uh, but I don't want to go from London to Hong Kong. They're kind of similar. And so Vietnam was uh, a place that was, since I was first there, that I, I was really in my mind. And <clears throat> uh, I, I think... Honestly, it might sound a bit arrogant, but I thought I could make a difference here. I, I, I thought that I could actually set up a company and sort of grow a company and, and, and you know, help, uh, you know, and I think I've kind of done that. <laughs> yeah, but how, do you, how did you imagine Vietnam for the future at that time? I think at the time I was pretty naive and I just <laughs> turned up here trying to do something different and mm -hmm. I didn't know where we're at. I mean, when I arrived here to start in the last sort of 15 years, I arrived here in 2008, which yeah. is just before a sort of economic crisis. They're yeah. not hiring foreigners. Um, the market was very difficult. Real estate, they thought, a lot of people thought I was a little bit crazy to turn up here and kind of try and push things around for a job. I knew what I wanted to do, and no one was going to let me st stop doing that, if, if I was honest. I was very focused about what I wanted to do. But did I have any idea about where Vietnam was going at the time? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, so so lucky to see you like this. Well, right? I, look, I was lucky, but I think, you know, you. I, I was very focused, and I was, mm -hmm. I was determined to um, work and to try and be successful. Uh, you know, and I think real estate is a very interesting um, business because as a real estate consultant, I'm a, I'm a corporate real estate consultant. So if the market is doing well, then people want to chat with me because mm. I'm going to help grow their business and help move them into space. Uh, and alternatively, the market is doing bad. People want to talk to me because they want to help reduce their costs and mm -hmm. their money. So I think Vietnam in the last sort of 15 years, in fact, it's, you know, it's uh, the government needs year on year stable growth. Mm -hmm. And so it's only going one way. And, and you know, when you read all the reports in the region, uh, you know, Vietnam is the, the rising star of Southeast Asia. And I feel that I've spent a couple of years here knowing the right people and where they're going and the developers. And so we can really help, um, you know, make sure that there's something building stuff that there's quality where people want to be. Um, and so, yeah, I think luckily, I think Vietnam's year on year growth is helping me a little bit. Mm. Give or take a few bumps on the road. <laughs> yeah, sure. But um, about Collier's Vietnam at that time, I know that you were, you had just 15 employees, right? At that time? Uh, so, so uh, yeah, let me just explain that. So, yeah. so Collier is, um, you know, is in 64, 65 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it is a, a huge organization. It's a very well-known organization. Uh, but here, is, here in Vietnam, it's a franchise. And so mm -hmm. um, the person that set Collier's up here is a gentleman called Peter Dinning. Uh, I think he's now been 25 years in Vietnam. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I work with Peter uh, and we, we've grown the company together. 
uh, over the last couple of years. Anybody consulting in property, it depends on the market in that country. So for example, Colliers in Japan is a tenant representation well known for. Uh, in Indonesia, it's property management. Uh, here, actually, it's a bit of everything because the market has only been trading since 1976, one year after the American war. Um, and so, you know, um, here we're involved in everything. Um, historically, Colliers was a valuations company. So we'd value the land and, and the cost to buy the land. Um, you know, we did uh, office leasing quite a bit. Um, but now we're involved in everything and, and the company's grown. And I think when it first started, uh, everything develops over time to an organization where we now have 120 people. Uh, we've got offices in Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, and all over the country. But the reality is that um, I think a lot, business is not easy in Vietnam for a foreigner. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, lot of the, the company was set up, we had a joint venture partner that wasn't particularly uh, ethical. Uh, we had a, a partner that was um, basically um, paying people in cash. Uh, mm -hmm. We had an account. We, we had lots of issues where, and I, I think if you're in business mm -hmm. here in Vietnam, you go through those. Um, and it's just, you've got to develop and grow and get a good foundation in the company so that you can expand a solid foundation. And so that it took a while to fix that. Mm. But... Um to compare this challenging period mm -hmm. with um, the big crisis at that time when you first come to Vietnam. Yeah, so how Well, is luckily, it? when I first came to Vietnam, oh. I wasn't running the company. Uh, yes, now, unfortunately, you... I am. So <laughs> the, the, it's a little bit more serious. Um, look, I, th I think, you know, like I said, Vietnam's on, um, you know, a rising uh, growth and uh, on, honestly, uh, it's one of the fastest growing economies in the world, right? So, um, and, and the company structure back then and the environment in 2008, yes, look, you know, it's a global economic downturn. Uh, and, and, you know, even now, um, you know, now you have a, a war going on, you have rising inflation, you have political unrest, you have loads of issues around the world. Um, but Vietnam is kind of, very sure and steady and growing along in mm -hmm. the right way. And so I think there's always, it doesn't matter how disruptive the world is, there's always pockets of opportunity that you can have a look at and and you can kind of advise on and you can help. Um, so for me, I think it, a lot of the times I can only do what's in my control to do and the rest of the world is going to do what they're going to do. And I think, you know, we just look at things and advise our clients, how's the best way for them to take advantage of what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, you know, good or bad, um, being a foreigner here, being someone that runs um, an organization like Colliers, um, <clears throat> I get to meet a lot of people, um, but you have to give them the good advice. Right, you you have to make sure that you're going to help them, or else you're not worth anything. And so it's a success based business, and you know, so you need to be very focused. You need to make sure that you're giving benefit to your clients. And uh, as soon as they feel that that's not happening, um, you know, and so, so I think going back to your question, 2008 difficult time, you know. COVID for two years, that's a difficult time. Mm. People are still coming out of that. Currently, political unrest and lots of other things going on. That's all different. But you have to put your best foot forward and, and really sort of kind of get the mm -hmm. right information and kind of tell people the right things to, to move their business forward and help them accelerate their success. Mm -hmm. But what do you expect to observe in the next like three years after this challenging period? Um, in well, in the next three years, well, the, the police siren's going off here, so hopefully that's not a warning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, look, I think I think Vietnam in the next three years, actually in the next 10 years, is only going one way, and that's mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it is the only country in Southeast Asia last year that had pro positive GDP growth. Uh, the population is one of the fastest growing populations in the world. 65% of the people are under 35. Uh, there's rising, um, you know, disposable income. 
Urbanization rate is currently 36%, moving to 50%, which means there'll be more people living in the cities in the next 10 years. Uh, it's moving from an agricultural to a light industrial economy. I mean, all of these things mean that it's in the perfect position to grow and develop. And um, not only that, but the people here are lovely. So uh, I think, you know, three years, 10 years, um, it's going to be year on year growth every year, stable development. There'll be a few issues, no doubt. Um, but I, I think this is the place to be in the world right now, to be totally honest. Mm. So do you have to change your strategy for Collier's Vietnam? Anybody, any leader in business has to have a plan. But unfortunately, the world being the way it is, plans change. You know, in, in, in the beginning part of 2000, you know, 2020, did I think that there would be a global pandemic for <laughs> two years? No. You know, and so, you know, you, you have to readjust your strategy to move on. Um, you know, do I think that there would be at the moment in Vietnam, I'd say, but like uh, some people are under investigation in real estate and other stuff, you know, do I think that, um, you know, you have to advise people and the strategies change about the best way to, to conduct business and, you know, to, to move things forward. And, and so, yeah, plan, but plans change. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I think you have to be adaptable um, and flexible in terms of what you want to be. Do I think that I can get a, a you know, um, a Singaporean company and try and move the Singaporean company mm -hmm. into Vietnam and behave in a Singaporean way? No. Do I think that it's going to happen if I'm Australian and I'm trying to run an Australian business in Vietnam? No, I think you have to be adaptable. <laughs> and actually being part of of adaptable is actually a good thing because you get the best out of um, the people that work for you. Um, you know, there's no point kind of trying to put everyone in the same mold. You have to get the best out of the people and the environment that you're in. Mm. Actually, I can see the trend that many other people, not only you, move have moved to Vietnam for especially recent years mm -hmm. after COVID-19. Yeah, mm -hmm. what do you think of the reasons? Well, um, me moving over here um, was uh, just a, a push away from the country that I was in. Mm -hmm. And and I think that a lot of people these days, uh, you know, I'm a little bit older, so but a lot of the younger people, mm -hmm. uh, YOLO, you only live <laughs> once, you know, they want to move mm -hmm. abroad and they want to experience living abroad. Um You know, I, I think people want that sort of change in life. I think they're dissatisfied of, you know, growing up in the same place, you know, going to work in the same place. There's, you know, they want to have those different experiences abroad and they want to have, um, you know, they, they live one life, right? I, I, you know, for me, um, I came over here and I, as long as Vietnam, you know, is happy to have me, I'll be here for a lot longer, I hope. It's, for me, it's not a case of just doing two years abroad and then going home and ticking that box from working abroad. I actually want to be here and grow and develop. Um, and, you know, I'm here talking with you, so it's <laughs> not going so badly. Mm, yeah. And I think that um, I, I think that your dream when you come here, uh, when you came here is like come true now, right? to make something different for yourself, for the real estate market, something like that? I'm not altogether sure that when I came here, um, I thought I'd be on a podcast with <laughs> with you. I think, um, you know, I, I, I literally, I just wanted to work and be good at what I, what I can do. And so I, I, I was obsessional about going back to university, doing degrees, getting other qualifications, understanding about you know, um, green buildings, understanding about finance and properties, everything. <laughs> Because I, I just, if I am an advisor, I, I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. For me, I, I don't necessarily need to employ people that are good in real estate. I just want them to have a good head and a good heart. Mm -hmm. And so if they're, they're, they're smart and they want to learn and they're passionate about what they want to do, then they're going to be successful in life. Um, 
in, in my opinion. Like, uh, um, you have to have drive and you have to have ambition and you have to have goals. Uh, but really a good head and a good heart goes a long way. Mm. If we have good head and good heart, I think that we can be successful anywhere in the world. Sure, Not only, yeah. yeah. Mm. But um, of course, in the developing countries like Vietnam, we can have more opportunities, right? I think so. Um, yeah, look, I, you know, I come from London. That's a mm. big city. Yeah. Um, you know, I grew up there. Uh, and there's lots of opportunities in London as well. Mm. I think the difference is in Vietnam is that the Vietnamese, from a Western point of view, are super creative, right? Mm. They are, they are, there's more sort of little <laughs> businesses and internet businesses going on here. Everyone's young, they're entrepreneurial, they, they want to get involved in something. And so it's a great, exciting country and place to be because everyone has a good head and a heart. They're, they're, they're very <laughs> passionate about what they want to get involved in. Mm. And so, you know, for me to, um, being slightly older, but for me to, <laughs> to come in here and just be around this sort of youthful growth and exciting um you know place and city and people uh it, it is it's really engaging and it's really inspiring so you know it's great to be a part of that mm. and what is your most preferable thing in vietnam what's my most preferable thing in vietnam yeah. well it's not the traffic <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, you know, um, actually, look, I think Vietnam's full of amazing wonders, right? Whether it be, you know, the locations and, and, and places here. Hanoi is very different than Saigon. Saigon's mm. very different than Da Lat. Da Lat's very different than Hoi An. You know, they've all got their different flavor and style to them. Mm. And I, I think it's the same, you know, um, business in Hanoi is very different than business in Saigon, right? Uh, um, you know, the, 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 I think everything has, e even the people, e everyone has a, a sort of wonder about them here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's really, if you, for as a Westerner, if you open your eyes up here, I mean, Vietnam is a magical place. Oh, yeah. So I, I can't say one thing. Uh, you know, the food's pretty good. Mm -hmm. For anyone that sort of has known me over the 15 years, I do fluctuate in weight. <laughs> depending depending on the season um you know obviously um i don't know if you know in in the west they say you know kilograms but it, it used to say stone yeah and so when you arrive here they, they say that you put on the saigon stone because you go out you meet lots of people you eat lots of food and then you have to get you know suits made again because <laughs> you go up three or four sizes in suits so you, you know um <laughs> Yeah, the food's pretty good, you know. But you do boxing, right? I do do boxing. I do a few things. Um, over the years, um, I, I need to, honestly, um, I don't know. I, I, I have lots of Vietnamese friends mm. and I, I go out with them and they eat a lot. I mean, a lot, lot. They eat and eat and eat and eat <laughs> and eat. Um, but actually, they don't seem to put on any weight. <laughs> I just look at food and I put on weight. So I have to go to the gym regularly just to kind of make sure that, you know, I'm in a little bit of shape. Also, I think, I think you're fit. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, um, for, for me, you know, it's a very weird thing, um, especially in business. Uh, there, There is, if you are, you know, if you are overweight, maybe in business, I think people think that you're lazy, right? So, you know, <laughs> if you've got a beard, people think you're hiding behind something. A little bit of ex, I have to say the gym also, I find the gym extremely boring. Mm -hmm. So at least uh, boxing, I can kind of uh, take out some stress uh, on that. And yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So I think after your long journey and also the boxing too, I think you're like mm, adventurous, right? Um. Uh, surely I'm adventurous because I've, mm. I, you know, actually I think there's a, a, a thing with uh, foreigners that do work overseas. I mean, mm. you have to be a certain type of person that's going to leave your friends and family behind and go and explore something that's new. Um, I don't know if it, adventurous might be one thing. Maybe my risk profile is a bit <laughs> wild, you know, it's a bit low. Um, I, but I think you, you only get out what you put into something. And so you have to take um, a journey to to 
to to follow and, and maybe see where it ends up. It's uh, it's about finding opportunity and to make sure that um, you know the journey and the people around you uh, and life is fun, right? Mm, yeah, sure. So. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think that your story, your long journey in Vietnam, is is can may, might uh, inspire many people, especially foreigners, to move here. Okay. Yeah. Hope well, that was very quick. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you know, so uh, and I, I really, just as a sort of leaving comment, um, you know. Hopefully, it comes across. But Vietnam has been very, and the Vietnamese people have been very great to me. And and um, I can't say enough good things about that. So you know, hopefully, somebody who might be coming across this and has the patience to listen to our conversation, <laughs> um, hopefully, it inspires them just to take that little bit of opportunity. What I would say is, there are people here in Vietnam um, and in my life where they've they've they greatly helped and assist where they didn't need to. And so, you know, I think the generosity of others really, uh, you know, you, you have to make sure that you help people along the way. Uh, sure. and, and hopefully that's, yeah. Sure. And I hope you can make more friends in Vietnam too and enjoy the life. Here. I have lots of friends okay. in Vietnam. <laughs> and so I hope you're more. one of them now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Look, thanks for the time. Yeah. Thank you so much. 